Hello everyone, you welcome to this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television live from our headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Bable Jonathan. In our top stories in this edition of the news, the second longest and most decisive term of the 2019-2020 academic year is on the way, but many schools remain closed in Anglophone Cameroon. The few that are open, the attendance remains means a timid and of course this is because of the anglophone crisis we're going to show you the picture of back to school in anglophone cameroon for the second term of the current academic year in this newscast and the president of the IA international foundation dragged some cameroonians journalists and media outlets to cut over accusations that the organization is transporting and selling arms to separatist fighters in the northwest and southwest regions of the country and the auxiliary lions of the Republic of Cameroon have intensified training ahead of the African Nations Championship. The Shan, the uh, indomitable lions of their category, had their first training today in Douala. Recently, the Minister of Territorial Administration of the Republic of Cameroon said in a statement that there is an organization, a non-governmental organization that was caught with arms in the southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon and some organizations qualified that as a rumor intended to intimidate or frighten civil society leaders from doing the job, notably within the context of the Anglophone crisis and now the president of the IA International Foundation, IA Bini, has dragged to court some Cameroonians, journalists and media outlets over accusations that the organization is transporting and selling arms to separatist uh, fighters in the northwest and southwest regions of the country. He is asking for proofs of that accusation. Take a listen to IA Bini in this extract. With Seize the court of first instance Yaoundé against Mr. Congo Success, Mr. Njumbe Franklin, uh, Mr. Obama, Ernest of uh, Vision Card, including his television station, um, Nanek Dot, that's a newspaper, and a Facebook platform um, controlled by somebody, uh, is called My Country People then. So these people will be hoping that in the coming days they will present proof to the Cameroonian people that the IA Foundation has been buying arms, uh, importing the arms, transporting the arms and supplying them to Amber Boys. Um, that's the news they have been uh, circulating. So um, if they cannot do that, then our case against them is a criminal proceeding for defamation, uh, propagation of fake news, blackmail, among others. We are just hoping that the justice system in Cameroon will be independent, we are just hoping. And we are hoping that we will not regret trusting the justice system in Cameroon. Meanwhile, our international correspondents are also seizing the courts in America and Europe. And so it's some kind of a triple proceeding. So that's what we call here. We will hope that, we really hope that uh, Interpol, the judicial police, uh, the justice system, the Cameroon people, um, diplomatic uh, representations around the world, uh, the government of uh, the United States and uh, Britain in particular because we'll be asking for the assistance to help us uh, to force these people to present proof to the Cameroonian people for the accusations they are accusing the foundation of. Aya Aya Abine, president of the Aya International Foundation, speaking to pressmen in the nation's political capital, Yaoundé, should be noted that the Minister of Territorial Administration of the Republic of Cameroon, uh, Atanganji Paul, in his press statement, did not name the non-governmental organization concerned, neither did he give the exact locality in the southwest region where the said organization was caught with uh, uh, guns and now the network of human rights 
white defenders in Central Africa. Redak qualified that information as uh, a rumor that was intended to frighten or better still intimidate non-governmental organizations and civil society leaders from doing their job, notably as far as the two Anglophone regions and the social, political and security crisis is concerned. And uh, Hermine Luga compiled the views of the organization, the Network of Human Rights Defenders in Central Africa, in this report. The explosive number of civil society actors in Cameroon working for the welfare of the vulnerable exists. A handful who go through tough times to achieve their goals. Quite often they are threatened and most recently they have been accused of smuggling arms into the troubled regions while channeling help. Maximilien Gombe is a civil society actor and according to her the accusation is unfounded as there are no proofs which in case existed should have been shown to the media so as to discredit the civil society actors. She considers the accusations a threat. But above all odds, she promises to keep the fight. Uh, the fight is now coming. I, want, I wanted you two to know that I, I, will make, I will make all my best make that we have the peace in North And on the president's end of year speech, Maximilian Gombe says the speech was simply in patches and wasn't consistent. She anyway appreciates the end of year gift to the victims of the crisis by the state, which she says affirms the state recognizes there is a problem. Donc cela veut dire que eux-mêmes ne, ne sont pas certains que tout ce qu'ils ont mis jusqu'à Though intensifying actions for the welfare of the vulnerable and victims of circumstances. In a critical moment, Maximilien Gombe stands credible in the eyes of international humanitarian actors who have gotten her receive additional awards. And close to three years down memory lane since the Anglophone crisis of violence broke out in the Anglophone regions of the Republic of Cameroon, the ghost town imposed by pro-independence fighters is still being respected across the two regions. Every Monday, there is ghost town in Anglophone uh, Cameroon. The towns and villages are almost uh, dead. No activities going on and some of the towns and villages where there are activities. The activities are very uh, timid and we are taking you to the uh, town of Mbengui in the Momo Division, northwest region of the Republic of Cameroon to show you the picture of ghost town, the ghost running through Mbengui in this report compiled by Smanji Kangebre. A normal day at the Mbong Motor Park in Bengui, Momo Division of the Northwest Region. Business persons and inhabitants go about their normal activities each free. It's ghost town this Monday and the park has been abandoned. No soul could be seen at the Mbong Motor Park in Bengui. As business persons as well as its inhabitants stay indoors for the fear of the unknown. As we moved around Mbengui town, some few persons could be spotted, certainly heading to their farms. <laughs> Apart from Bengui, some major streets in Kumba, chief town of Meme Division, were also deserted by its inhabitants. No commercial motorcycle, private car, no taxi could be spotted moving. Many had hoped that after the holding of the major national dialogue and the recent putting into law of the special statutes, though not yet into practice, the ghost town phenomenon will come to an end. Unfortunately, ghost towns continue to hamper business activities in the two English-speaking regions, three years running, with even government offices succumbing to it. 
And I told you in the headlines that contrary to effective school resumption for the second term of the 2019-2020 academic year in Francophone parts of the country, many schools remained closed in Anglophone Cameroon as a result of the Anglophone crisis. In Osana, they tells us that the town in the town of Kumba, some schools were operational, but many remained closed. Just a couple of days into the second term of the academic year, the usual odd turnout of pupils and students in the West of Anglophone regions was witnessed in some schools. During an inspection and evaluation tour of the second assistant senior divisional officer for Meme Division of the Southwest region, Hemian Jonje, it was discovered that government's Balingua High School station in Kumba received only teachers after festivities. The school is also known to be hosting government secondary school Kake, whose operation has been threatened by the prevailing armed conflict. Same situation was recorded at Kast Kumba that hosts government secondary school Kangbarombi because of the unstable socio-political tension in the area. Some students could at least be seen on campus, though in assorted wells. In Kumba town, the situation was better as turnout of students in schools was satisfactory. Same as in the teacher's training college in Yet. If you see the population in the compound, all the teachers are there and the students are there. We even have 85 students from Enser who have come for teaching practice. So we are negotiating to arrange how we shall accommodate them to do effectively their teaching practice for the academic year 2019-2020. However, hope is nursed. The situation will be better off in the coming days for catch up this crucial term. Coming up, for me, Armstrong Sander paints the picture of back to school for the second term of the 2019-2020 academic year in other parts of Anglophone Cameroon. His report. Monday, January 6, 2020, kids of government school Tabinkane and Binka villages of Kame Central Subdivision, Donga Mountain Division of the Northwest Region of Cameroon are present in school in an atmosphere similar to what obtained before the escalation of the Anglophone crisis. It is a normal start of the second term of the 2019-2020 academic year in the French-speaking regions of Cameroon, but in few localities of the English-speaking regions, where classes have opened like Tabinkane and Binka villages, it is a new dawn. They have been without classes for three years and more in some cases because of the worsening Anglophone crisis. Schools have been attacked, burned and some school officials victimized for the past years in the conflict hit regions which have all contributed in paralyzing the teaching and learning process. In a challenging security environment, local administrators and elites have multiplied efforts to get kids back to school and fully equipped for the new task. On the 25th of November 2019, Mr. Ngala Gerard called schools to reopen in Tabikin and he surprised us with 1,000 books, exercise books and 1,000 pens for the pupils. And today, the 6th of January 2020, he himself has surprised us with 1,000 uniforms given by Mr. Shea Jones. We are very happy because when you came in the morning, you saw that the children were just looking like street children. They were not looking like school children. And now, when you look at the children, you see how bright they are. They, they studied in assorted dresses throughout November and December 2020 and feel different in their new attire this new season. I am very happy today for the uniform. Yes, I am very happy. A majority of schools remained closed in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon, even as the second term effectively kick-started in the French-speaking regions of the country. Kambe in the northwest region of the Republic of Cameroon for several months now has been uh, standing out as an example to back up the standpoint that uh, some there is some relative improvement on the situation in the northwest and southwest regions of the country. The standpoint of people like Christian Cardinal Tumi, one of the chief conveners of the Anglophone General uh, Conference and Archbishop Emeritus of the Douala Metropolitan Archdiocese of the 
the Roman Catholic Church. In the report coming up next, Hermin Iluga takes a look at the impact of dust on the health of Cameroonians. Among the seasonal changes effects comes along virus infections such as Qataran cold, which often nails down persons with somewhat weak immune systems. Qataran itself, according to health specialists, is the excessive discharge or buildup of mucus in the nose or throat associated with inflammation of the mucous membrane. <laughs> With the spread of the virus at the peak of seasonal switches, people highly contract the disease during the dry season. Dr. Charles Chentry says it is as a result of its existence in the air and dust. In fact, the grip is part of the season when we change the temperature. Meantime, there exist home remedies to keep body healthy, which are avoiding things that would trigger the symptoms such as allergens, smoky places, dusty places, among others. Dr. Charles Chentry as well advises hand washing, good feeding and more. Lorsqu'on mange bien un aliment équilibré, ça renforce déjà les défense de l'organisme naturel. And while aligning with preventive methods, health experts advise consultation after three days of persistent symptoms. Otherwise, complications such as sinuses could develop. In sports, the auxiliary lines of the Republic of Cameroon are intensifying training ahead of the 2020 African Nations Championship. And they have their first training session in Douala today. It's Manjik and Gabriel Fars in details. Journalists stranded in front of the Douala Annex Reunification Stadium. <laughs> The journalists were refused access into the playground ahead of the first training session of the Auxiliary Lions in Cameroon's economic capital. The arrival of the team press officer changed nothing as he entered into the playground, leaving his colleagues behind. The arrival of the boss carrying the auxiliary lions at the Bepanda next stadium brought hopes to the journalists who were finally allowed to get into the pitch. Immediately on the green turf, the boys of Yves Clement Aroga began their training session. We are very happy to be here and uh, all we try to train technically and tactically system. We are going to do a, a game. We are playing very good. Uh, we are seeing the new players we come in. We see how they physically they, they feel. So everything is good. Uh, we are going to work very hard to have the, the, good, the best team. The auxiliary lions who are in Douala for the third training camp are warming up for the upcoming African Nations Championship to be hosted in Cameroon. The players for now are satisfied with the ongoing exercise. It's wonderful, you know, being with a team like this, the national team, it's a wonderful experience. I think it's good. You know, it's wonderful. You know, Douala is a little bit hot, but uh, we are putting our effort. We can only do our best. We don't think on the climate. Uh, all we have to do is we are on work. To me, it, it is good because I know I'm there because I'm putting all my effort. I'm trying everything I can do to be there. And the coaches are working with us and we are putting our extra effort. We are working hard. It's my first time being with them, with a team like this. And uh, being with the coaches, I've, I've come to learn a lot because they are not just like coaches to us, but they are like fathers, like parents to us. I feel good. I feel excited coming back after a while. I'm impressed with the group. Uh, I believe that um, with the new year and the new season, we're going to do so many things. Uh, I know they are expecting high. I know they are expecting high grit and high level. We are here to work. This is the only thing we know how to do best. The ongoing training camp in Douala comes days after two of such camps held in Yaoundé. The training session in Douala will end with a friendly match against their counterparts from Chad on January 24, 2020. The African Nations Championship comes up from April 4th to the 24th in Cameroon with four cities hosting the tournament. That's it for the first part of this newscast. Talking Point is up next.
thanks for staying with us in Talking Points. We are receiving one of the uh, prominent female civil society leaders in the Republic of Cameroon and on the African continent. Sylvie Jacqueline Dogmo is the Cameroon president of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, the president of the Cameroon branch, and she also coordinates that organization on the African continent. Sylvie Jacqueline Dogmo, you're welcome. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Happy New Year. Same to you. Thank you. When you look at those pictures of uh, back to school in Anglophone, Cameroon, uh, some of the schools, in some of the schools' classrooms are empty. Uh, many of the schools, of course, have remained closed for close to three years now, and they are still closed. And in some of the schools, uh, there is a relative uh, return to uh, normalcy some sort of uh, a normal situation like what we saw in Kambe, for example, which looks like what used to be uh, before 2016. When you look at those pictures, what do you think? What's your take on the situation on the ground? Is there, is that, is there a sign of improvement? Yes, I, I can say that even though we have what we call some sign of improvement, there are, that's true, but I'm still very, very worried and sad sad because education is a base for everything when you miss education you have missed almost everything i don't know i'm asking myself this question are we what are, are we mobilizing to have a lot of we are going to have so many frustrated uh, adults in a few years time we are going to have so many uh, delinquents and it's it's very bad as a mother as a parent, as a teacher, I'm a teacher by profession, I feel very bad because I know very well, very well that we are going into a very difficult next year. I, we have been doing some work in the past three months and talking to some IDPs in the country and we're able to see that some parents are still back in those regions but at least sending their children to safer cities for education. Looking at the situation even there, we are worried because there are new dynamics. We had many cases of children who were going on school in Bamenda, Boya, and so on, but are now forced into new families. They are not going to normal school. They are going to evening schools, and some of them are having difficult situations. Some are even abused by the parents in the new, new communities. So for me, I feel that the situation is very, uh, is still disturbing as we should have a holistic response to all this. We should not have a country where some people go to school, others do not have, and then, no, that's not okay. And, and you were talking about the, the, the future impact of the fact that many young people, many school going, many children of school going ages are not going to school now. And you're talking about uh, frustrated young people yes. tomorrow and... Uh, yes. Uh, yes, yeah, like what we are doing today, what is happening today? You are creating a pool or a movement, let me call it, because you are talking about a, a huge number of people, a movement of people who are going to be frustrated. And you can imagine how a, a frustrated person behaves. It's, it's because education is the base of everything. A child which is, who is lacking education now is, is somebody who, because of this frustration, will end up being enrolled, will end up being a delinquent, will end up in all all these negative things that we have. So I feel that it's a bomb. It's a really, it's a future bomb. That it's we a time bomb. Yes, it's a time bomb. And then action should be taken now. We should have, either we have school or we don't. There is no, no position where we have some people stay in the house and others no. I still feel that the, the, the strategies, the measures taken are not the proper ones. The, another issue that we raised in this uh, newscast is the issue of ghost town, the issue of ghost town. Three years, we are getting to three years in this crisis and ghost town is still being respected. We saw Mbengue on Monday, nobody, just some few people seen, passing around places that we are normally uh, very busy on ordinary days are deserted by the people. What do you think about this ghost town imposed by the separatists uh, or pro-independence fighters in those two regions and the fact that the people are respecting this ghost town? No, uh, for, from the, I've, I've never been for the ghost town. I, I can never bid for that because 
a situation of conflict should be resolved, not with violence. Ghost town is a viol is a lot of violence, which is not okay. Because we had also a meeting, as I was telling you, when we had a situation where some elderly person were either killed because when people are running away to go to the surface, what about the others? Ghost town means that you cannot go out. What if you are sick? There are cases of sick people. What if you are in? You, are, you have to give birth. Of course, when the car is coming, you cannot imagine who is in the car. So therefore, for me, ghost town is not the solution. I strongly feel that from both sides, there is a need to really sit down and, and discuss. What the separatists are imposing on the population is not okay. Because the they are not the, 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 the problem. They are, they, are, they are either frustrating the population who are not who did not create the situation. Therefore, I feel that by having this regular ghost town or lockdown or whatever is not a proper solution because it's the population who is paying the, at the end of the day is the population. And one Therefore, of the I feel that they should change the. I'm not saying that what they are asking for is not okay. It is okay, but it's good to look for other ways to ask for the. the, the, the to be heard for me. But unfortunately, what is happening in Cameroon today, uh, some uh, uh, critics has pushed some critics to say that uh, the only language that the government of Cameroon seems to hear is that of uh, violence and civil disobedience. Uh, and that is why some of these uh, people undertake these actions in order to compel government to take a number of actions that will solve their grievances. And the, the, the issue is that the people are respecting the ghost town. Yes, because if, if you want what will you do? If you don't respect, at the end of the day, you are going your house, you are going to be a target of the separatists. Therefore, it's out of fear that they are respecting. They are, they are not respecting most of them because they want to. Of course, there are others who, who buy the cost, but most of the time it's out of fear that they are respecting. But about the the only language the governor is hearing, I don't think so. It's not the only language because if it, the governor was hearing this language, the solution has been the problem has been solved since. But we are still in the same situation, meaning that even the government does not want to listen to this. If not, because today we still have many people being killed. We still have lockdown. People are paying the prices out of it. But the government still is not for me. That's my own opinion. I feel that is the way uh, the, 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 this thing is being approached. I, I have been here many times. I still feel that if the head of state really talks in a non-violent way, in a peaceful way, in a fatherly way to the population, things are going to change. Of My course. only worry is that most of the time, whether the head of state or some ministry, sometimes the language is not proper. It's a language which makes people to be more radicalized. So I feel that we should, from both sides, change our strategies because the population, especially women and children, are the one paying the greatest price out of it. And the government has been condemning all acts of violence and other civil society leaders, politicians, condemning all acts of violence that have led to the death of uh, hundreds of thousands or, or thousands of people, the displacement of many people, the destruction of hundreds of villages uh, and so on. But uh, as you were indicating earlier, uh, the head of state in his end of year address to the nation said those who are going to continue on the wrong way will be fought by the military. No, I, I want to say that. This is the first time in Cameroon we are really understanding the saying which is we know when a war starts and never when it ends. So now it's not about using threat again, no. On daily basis people are dying. I, I still heard yesterday a house which was burned. So there are many things fueling the situation. Now for example the election. So we are instead of things being uh, on the good side, we are instead having more and more cases of killings and so on. Therefore, I think that in my humble way, we should humble ourselves and really say that we, the people who are dying are Cameroonian. We are brothers and sisters and change the tone. Whether all of the separatists in court, the Amba boys in court, the Boko Haram, even if all of them are killed, it's still important to address, to ask ourselves, why are they 
behaving so. Why is somebody capable of burning a house? No. Whether they are killed or not, that's not the solution. So it's not about saying that they are going to be killed, all of them. Yes, they can be killed, but it's still going not to solve the problem. Because more people are going to come and still pose the same problem. It's very important to look at the root causes. Why are people asked what are, they, what is, what are their needs and address those needs? Because killing or condemning is not threatening is not the solution even if uh, we have the military 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 no military is not a solution you have been in the northern parts of the republic of cameroon taking some uh, uh, doing some studies on the security challenges yeah. Yeah. being faced particularly in the far north region of the yeah. country and today we are talking about an explosion of a grenade that left about nine persons dead and several other persons injured at the border between mm -hmm. nigeria and Cameroon. When you look at this recent incident, what you take on the management of the uh, the Boko Haram uh, challenge, the Boko Haram security challenge in the final region of the country? Yes, when I <coughs> went there, we were able to know that there's a problem with the management. In some cities like Mara and Mora and so on, the population are a bit safer than the others. There are some uh, regions, some, oh, sorry, some localities which are almost abandoned. And then, therefore, the population are still victims of the Boko Haram attacks. So for me, it's a matter, matter of really the management, the strategies, that's number one. And also number two, we have all of this. We have Boko Haram, we have Northern and South West. Of course, it's, very, it's also very difficult for the government to, to address all this. So that's why it's very important as we are trying to look for proper ways of managing the, the crisis in the Boko Haram crisis, but also to look at the holistic because government is also very uh, in a very difficult situation now. All right. What, what should be done to avoid such uh, incidents occurring? We are told by uh, in official information that uh, a child was uh, looking for some kind of uh, uh, pieces of iron uh, to be sold and so on and then the child stumbled on the grenade and picked it up thinking that it was something that could be sold and on the way during a manipulation of yeah. the grenade it exploded and led to the uh, death of several I, I, I feel that this this fight is not for the government alone the government should create a conducive environment and enable the civil society and enable the population to also be part of it. So it's not about the government itself. It's a way of how do we come together. So the population, the civil society, all the stakeholders can be involved in this. And it's very important to make the population feel confident and therefore they will also cooperate. But when they feel that the government is doing everything alone, for us, for example, I feel that as women, there is some, many things can be done, but the government does not really take into account properly the role women can play in peace processes. It's very important that, as we say, we should be stronger together. It's good to change the strategies that we are using right now. All right, before we go, your last word on the uh, security and socio-political climate in Cameroon. Very tense. Extremely tense. And I'm very worried. And I pray that we don't have more people dying. I pray that we don't have more houses burned. I pray that we really... I call. It's a strong call I'm sending to the head of state and to the administrator in general to change the strategies because I'm, sh I'm sure that by the 9th of the February we are going to have many other damages and I don't want that to happen. Please, we should change the language and stop threatening and using instead non-violent language to come to a solution to this crisis. Sylvie Jacqueline Dogmu, you are the president of WIF Cameroon and you are coordinating the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom on the African continent. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thanks ladies and gentlemen for staying with us. That's it for today. Tomorrow, Hemini Luka will be here with Monus.